And I'm here with Drunk Sports, your boy Kid Chocolate, again here and spreading love and knowledge, man, and making awareness for everything that we're doing right here with um, Drunk Sports. God bless y'all. God bless. <laughs>
He don't he don't mm -hmm. care about that fame and all that stuff. He come to get the dogs, the dudes who don't care, uh, who ain't going to say, oh, hold on, you're fighting Terrence Crawford. And, and uh, he was getting sparked a little bit. And I said, that's what you need for this fight. That's what you need for this fight. Uh, I went on my brother Fanon's channel and told him, I said, it's going to be the reaction punches, basically the takeaway punches, because Arrow punches wide. Mm. He punches wide everywhere. Mm. He fights like Derrick James used to fight. Mm. If you all ever seen Derrick James fight, for those of who's are, are aficionados, Derrick would hit you with the nice one too, but he would punch to the body very wide. Arrow fights the same way. And uh, that's a recipe for disaster if you're doing takeaway punches because a puncher hits you here and you'll come back with an uppercut. A puncher come like a slow jab and you'll tap it and come over the top of it. It's called a takeaway punch for mm -hmm. most people who don't know. And that's all you have to do to a fighter who punches wide. Errol right now um, has to reinvent himself. Can he reinvent himself? Does he have the tools and the people around him to reinvent himself? He needs a fast jab. He don't have that. He don't have the speed because you fight in a lightweight who's moved up to welterweight and is now at middleweight. He's always mm. going to be faster than you and more technical. Mm. So the question is going to be with Errol, but Terrence punches so hard, can you take a punch to give a punch? Mm -hmm. And if you can't, we're going to watch the same fight probably yeah. even faster. How much can you sell out? No doubt. Yeah. And if you can't take that punch to give a punch or if you can't uh, punch with him or if you can't jab, you can jab with the jabber. You can't hook with the hooker. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative with the hooks. You got to make him spin his wide a little bit and punch on the half beat, as we call it, which is in between punches. As he throws his one, two, you got to step in there with your cross. You got to take the chance with your uppercut. You got to have, uh, you, you better eat some cement because you, you going to touch your chin. There's no way around it. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 I don't see, I don't see a reason to want to purchase the fight other than that this could be Errol Spence's last fight. Now you could sell it like that. He, he, he's, you saw him on Twitter. They was, they was, they was frying him on Twitter. He said that, he said it ain't his last fight. I think one dude was like, calling him a one trick pony and all this crazy shit my whole thing with arrow and he he admitted something that's very key and and i mean i want you to you to comment on his um he basically said i ain't been living like a fighter this whole time right now we used to see him back in the day with adrian broner running around you know when arrow's flashy phase when he was running around he he was kind of acting like ab's with the charlos and all that you know what i mean but i always thought in the back of my mind like I don't. I didn't feel he jumped off the edge. You know, AB got the big stomach and all that. No disrespect, I fuck with AB. You know what I'm saying? But Errol, I felt like he went over the edge. He always kept himself in some type of shape, and I felt like he kind of separated himself from AB and them for a minute. And I felt like he went back to the drawing board and and, and got back to business. But from the way he tells it, it, that ain't really the case. I mean, you know, he's this one fight has dropped him his stock so crazy right now, right? You know what I'm saying? Um. Do you think, I, I know you think Terrence got him and everything, but for the people who do think Errol, I mean, Errol got a shot, you know, what do you think he has to do? Errol, Errol has to, in order to win, he's got to, he's got to quadruple his jab and it has to be fast. Let me give That's you the example. Thing. He's funda his fundamentals and his jab is what Errol he punches like this. It, it jabs, it comes out, it comes all the way back. What you have to do is shorten your punches. The way you shorten your punches in this case is you'll jab and then this elbow at the elbow you'll bend. So it becomes mm -hmm. as opposed to and he has to do that with almost all of his punches in order to match the speed of Crawford so he can get his shots off. Because during the fight, you can see the speed difference so bad. It's like you could see every time Errol was going to throw a punch. It looked like he was going to wind up for it. Like he was throwing a baseball or something. Yeah, you can't be grand. like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, the uh, the strategy I thought he would use was the one he used with Mikey Garcia. Mm -hmm. I think he had a chance to fight Terrence if he was going to box, be yeah. you know, and catch. If you can catch Terrence slipping with something, boom, you're dangerous. But if you just going in there thinking you're going to rough him and muff him up, he built for that. Terrence used to wrestle. 
Terrence used to Terrence think he could fight MMA and he probably yeah, can. <laughs> yeah, that's the mean bitch. I mean, I mean, what you think, man? And he'd be in the gym, he'd be he be headlocking dudes and muffing them and bent, putting them in arm bars and playing with them and stuff like that. So if right. if you don't know Crawford, you 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 mistake him for thinking he's just this skinny dude and he and he got low power. Word, word. Don't don't get it twisted. Don't get so, it Arrow, twisted. You twisted it. I need you to untangle it. Untangle I'm going for Crawford because he out here with us. That's my man's. I ain't going front. Him, mm -hmm. uh, Dion Sanders, all them. We we this is Colorado, right? So we out here like that. I, I can't even ride with you, Arrow. But uh, if you're gonna win, you got to shorten your punches. Uh, you can't be so wide to the body. Everything needs to be more tight. And it needs to be a points game until you see a spot where you can pick your power shot. Do not get in there punching wide thinking you're gonna rough this dude up. He's he he he's not a punk. And he can I take your shot. I think two things are that come into question, Cash. You pointed this out. Number one, he talked about, you know, changing, you know, I'm living different, not living as a fighter. Well, here's the thing. I can't really question him. And I would, I would, it's, it's disrespectful. Let me go back a bit. It's disrespectful for anybody to call him a one trick pony. Um, that's, that's just somebody that's just never really given themselves to anything to try to achieve greatness. So that's right. disrespect. That's number right. one. Number two. Now, you know, as, as Adrian pointing out, are there some fundamental holes? Absolutely. But it's, it's fundamental holes at a championship level based on um you know the opponents that he's fought on his way and I and and I'm not one that has questioned Earl's credibility but I'm always the kind of person when I watched him the two things I saw is the way he was living or not living because mm -hmm. the truth be told I don't judge because being a fighter takes so much discipline you dig what I'm saying so I mean I I just can't judge but one thing I know is this if I got some shit to do as much as I like to do other things, it's certain things I got to abstain from. And if you are a fighter and you really trying to be your best, one thing I know, me just getting up and go to the gym and I'm, I'm, you know, I consider myself an old man. I know for a fact that if I drink a little bit, I got to pay for it. I got to pay for it the next morning. So no how doubt. the hell do you be hanging out with rappers? I remember when I'm on the fringe with my little entertainment friends, how the hell you hanging out with rappers and, and me as old and as gray as I know, you can't be as prepared as the Joker that's more disciplined than us that says, yeah. not only do I not drink, not only do I not smoke, I like to go fishing, I like to play chess and all of those things like so yeah. we have to respect that. That yeah. alone says to me, even if Earl wanted to make those those amendments that Adrian is talking about, can he do it in, in, in this period of time? Can he do it in this period of time where we would expect the fight to happen? I think that's the bigger question. Because if he can't, I mean, you know, shit, we was waiting on Wilder to show us something that he's developed. Facts. Right. So, you know, if, if that experiment and they're two different people, but I'm saying the experiment of trying to, you know, Anthony Joshua, maybe to a better extent mm -hmm. has shown 